Good luck. Hope everyone had a very nice Shavuos and Shabbos. This is the weekly Mesil Shasharm Shir, the Path of the Just. Uh, just before we begin, the Ramban writes that usually on a Yantiv, when we make Havdalah, we don't have the spices. Um, uh, we did this year because it coincided with Shabbos, but usually when we make Havdalah at the end of a Yantiv, like if Shavuos would be during a weekday, we would make Havdalah and not use the spices. And he says the reason that we usually have spices on Shabbos is because uh, we don't want to feel bad that our extra soul left us on Shabbos, right? Every every Shabbos we got an Ashami Yasera, and on Saturday night we lose it. So as not to feel bad uh, for losing that extra soul, we smell the uh, the spices. But on a Yantiv, we don't smell the spices. The reason is, as he writes, because on Yantiv, we, any level which we achieved on that holiday, it stays with us. So we don't need to feel bad about losing any level. And on Shabbos, every Shabbos we get at higher level and we lose it. But on Yantiv, we don't lose it. So whatever level we gained on Shavuos, I'm sure most of us, we spend some time uh, learning Torah and thinking about what it means to be a Jew and what it means to study Torah. So whatever Madrega, whatever level we achieved, will not leave us. And now it has become a part of us. So let's go Mikhail al Chayel, And from that, let us begin our uh, study of the Path of the Just. And now we're learning about the attribute of Nikias, of spiritual cleanliness. Now this attribute, which we've discussed in previous weeks, is that someone is totally clean from sins. Totally spiritually clean from violating any sins. And obviously if someone uh, does this in the entire Torah, then he's at a very, very high level. He doesn't have even a, uh, a hint of sin that he violates. But what now... Th- we learned last week about the general attribute, just the general aspects of it. Now we're on chapter 11, which is the particulars of Nikias. And what the Ramchal is going to do here, he's going to go through many sins where people don't realize uh, that that there are is that there is in fact something wrong with certain actions. And he's going to say, while most of us, you know, we're not going to violate the major sins, right? For instance, we're not going to go and uh, rob a 7-Eleven at gunpoint. But we might do other things that have the might be related to theft. Maybe we'll we're not gonna we'll not work as hard if we're working for a boss and we'll take extra breaks. That's a type of theft. So while many of us we're not gonna go rob a 7-Eleven, we won't commit that type of theft. Other types we might not be so careful about. So even if we're what the Ramchal is gonna do in this chapter is going to go through many common occurrences where we might not even realize that there are some averas. Uh, sins in particular situations. And the idea is, is that we can work uh, the best we can to avoid those uh, those small averas. And, and last week we learned that the problem of the small averas, right, is that if someone commits a big sin, right, let's say somebody did hold up a 7-Eleven at gunpoint and he got arrested and he went to jail, so he realizes he did something really, really bad and he's going to repent, do truva, he'll pay back the store owner, and therefore... When after he uh, after 120, he's not going to be held accountable for that sin because he did tshuva, he did sincere repentance. But when it comes to the less serious sins, people don't realize their sins. Then we don't even think we did something wrong, and we don't do re- repent. And we've done it since we don't think it's such a big deal. We've done them so many times that they just accumulate to the point where we have all we have hundreds and not that not thousands of serious sins which will negatively affect our neshamas, and we don't do tshuva over it. So let's. Uh, begin. Let's start. Prate midas hanikius. Rabim heimod. The details, the particulars of nikius of spiritual cleanliness are very great. There's a lot of details. Vinam bechol pratim shebechol hashesa mitzvos losa say. There is as many details as there are uh, negative commandments in the Torah. Ki amnon inyan hamida kvar marti shehulios naki mekol anfei haveros. The aspect of this level we've already discussed is to be totally clean from all sin now again if we achieve this level we're on a very very high level right this is not just whereas the is being careful the first level that we learned we're on level three now by the way the first level that we learned was to be zahir to not violate sins to be careful not to violate sins but one could still be at that level and still violate the less known sins or the the sins with gray area where it's not so clear that something's a sin. When someone's a nucky, he doesn't even violate those sins that are in a gray area. We gave the example of, uh, we just spoke about theft. Another example we mentioned is about eating non-kosher food. Most, many people, 
will not go into a McDonald's and have a bacon cheeseburger. But we'll, what will they do? They're making the chalent before Shabbos and a little milk falls in and you're not sure if it's kosher or not. You'll have it anyway. You'll make excuses why it's okay. So when, when someone's a nucky, when someone's spiritually clean, even those sins he wouldn't think about violating. Even though the evil inclination tries to get us to sin, for every sin, right? the evil inclination tries to get us to violate the Torah as much as possible. Certain sins, even though the Yitzhahara always tries to get us to sin, there are certain sins that the Yitzhahara tries to get us to violate more than others, and people have a natural desire to violate them. And since people have a natural desire to violate those sins, they make excuses and they make uh, rationalizations in their head why these particular sins should be okay. Therefore, in those sins where we have a natural desire to, to violate those sins, uh, we need to be more careful and we need uh, a chizuk to strengthen ourselves in those areas. The rabbis say, what are two sins that people have a natural desire to violate? Gazel v'arayis, theft and uh, sexual immorality. Nafshu shal adam mechamadatam, umisavalehem. People naturally have a desire to do this, and they have a, a taiva, right? There's a natural, people are more inclined to violate the sins of theft and sexual immorality more than others. V'hinei anachnu ro'am, we see, she'af al pi shalo rov b'nei adam ganavim begalayhem, like we mentioned before, we see most people are not open thieves, Right? They don't go into the bank uh, with masks on and steal, even though now everyone's going into the bank with masks on. They don't go with masks on to, with a gun to rob from the bank. However, what do people do? People will make excuses, let's say, when they're having transactions, when they're having business transactions, that they'll sometimes enrich themselves while causing the other person to lose out. And they'll do things that are of questionable ethics in order that they should make a little bit more money. So while most people aren't going to go in and rob a bank, this they will do. When they're having a business transaction, they will kind of cheat the other person to make a little money and they make excuses for themselves. People don't realize that in addition to the Torah saying, thou shalt not steal, there are other prohibitions in the Torah which are related to, to stealing. Lo sa'ashayk. It says, lo sa'ashayk, you shall not cheat your fellow. Meaning in uh, in monetary matters. Talking about that you have to pay, a, you're not allowed to hold a worker's wages. right? If you hire somebody, you have to pay him right away. Lo sigzol, lo signovu, two types of theft, the Torah says. Lo sichachashu, you shouldn't, um, right, you shouldn't lie to gain money. Lo shaku ish bamito, another type of, uh, another type of lying. The first is denying falsely, right? You, someone says you owe you money and you lie about it, and you shouldn't lie. It's another one. Lo sonu ish es achiv, you're not allowed to overcharge somebody. People don't realize, right? You think you have a business. Uh, there's, there's laws about a business. You're not allowed to gouge people for money. Unfortunately, we saw people doing this in the most recent events. You're not allowed to go into your friend's, um, to be, to be masik gvul. Let's say if somebody has a store in a certain area, you're not allowed to go and open a store up across the street. There are many, many laws regarding this. People don't realize that, um, you know, they think, oh, it's competition. It's okay. It's not true. If someone has a store, you know, he sells, uh, he sells uh, bait and tackle to go fishing. One is not allowed to go open a bait and tackle store right up across the street and compete with him. Now, again, there's many laws regarding this, many details. It might depend if you're in a big city or a small city, if there are a lot of competitors or whatever it is. But uh, there are many, many rules about how we have to treat other people's money and be careful not to... Uh, not to... Um, go into their livelihood. These are all details about theft. 
Kolem Maisim Rabbim Mina Maisim Hanasim Bechal Hamasa Vamatan Hamadini. There's many laws about how we have to act when we have business transactions. Bekul Misurim Rabbim and many prohibitions. Kiloham Maisa Hanikam Reforsim Ba Eishik Abagazal Hu Levado Aser. It's not just regular theft which is prohibited by the Torah. Ela Kol Shesov Sof Yegi Ela Vigram Oso Kvar Hu Bechal Haeser. But anything which could cause theft is also prohibited. On the verse where it says, your friend's wife you shall not make impure, that means you shouldn't go into your friend's, um, your friend's business. You're not allowed to hurt your friend's business. Now how careful do you have to be to not take away business from a friend? So to the point where Rabbi Yehuda says that you're not even allowed to hand out treats for, so that kids will come to your store and not go to your friend's store, right? That's how careful you have to be to not take away business from your friend, right? We think that, you know, we think uh, everything's fair in business, you know, it's, we're competitors, we can just do anything to, um, to, make, to, make, to make a buck. So, but Rabbi Yehuda actually says you're not even allowed to give out treats to children because that'll take away from your friend's business. How were the rabbis allow it? But why? The rabbis don't allow it because there's no Indian to worry about your friend's business. Because also your friend, your friend could do the same thing, right? Just like you can hand out treats for kids, so your competitor could hand out treats. But without that reason, you wouldn't be allowed to have an unfair advantage on your competitor. The rabbi said, It actually says that to steal from another person is worse than stealing from the temple. To the point, how careful do we have to be worried about other people's money? It says, the Gemara says, if you're a hired worker, you're getting paid by the hour, the rabbi said that you don't have to make hamotzi before you wash for bread, right? Usually every time we eat bread, we have to wash our hands and we have to make hamotzi. But if you're working for somebody, since that will take extra time and you're not going to be working as much, for your boss, the rabbi said, you don't wash. You don't, you don't make a birch ha-samotzi. V'afilu b'kriya shema, lo chivum levatam v'malachtam elu b'parsh v'rishonam b'levad. And we know, even shema, you're only supposed to say the first uh, chapter of shema if you're working for somebody. You don't repeat, you don't say all three chapters of shema, just the first chapter. Ka v'chomer ben benosho, ka v'chomer, all the more so, l'divri ha-rishos, to something which is permiss- uh, not a mitzvah. Shekol sachar yom, asr b'hem shal levatam v'malachtam shal balabayas. So if we see that the rabbis are so careful that you can't even do mitzvahs, you can't even make hamotzi, you can't even um, say the entire Shema when you're working for somebody else because he's hiring you now. You can't be doing other things. You have to be working for him. So all the more so we should, some, a worker shouldn't be doing wasting his time on social media when he's working or doing other things. The boss wouldn't be very happy about that. That's considered stealing. And if you do those things, if you're not working when you are supposed to be working, that's considered stealing. It says that Abba Chilkia wouldn't even answer to Torah scholars that said hello to him because he didn't want to neglect the work that he was supposed to be doing. So we see how careful we have to be with other people's money to the point where if someone hires you, you're not even allowed to do, to do certain mitzvahs to say a motzi and say the entire Shema. Although nowadays we assume that a worker is okay with it, that when they hired you, they had that in mind that you could, you know, make a motzi and say Shema, but the principle it applies that we have to be that careful when you're a worker to be careful about other people's money. And the whole the whole point here is is that people think when the Torah says don't steal, that's just, you know, going into a seven eleven and holding it holding it up at gunpoint. But there are other aspects of, of stealing. Just like we mentioned, one's not allowed to open up a, a, a as a competitor next to his friend's business. One is not allowed to overcharge somebody. And there's a whole Shulchan Aruch on all of these laws. One cannot, when one's working for somebody else, he has to uh, work as uh, hard as he can and he can't uh, take breaks when he's not allowed to. And uh, even certain mitzvahs aren't allowed. To the point where I know a rabbi who was um, serving as a uh, officiant at a wedding and there were, uh, one of the witnesses was a person that this rabbi knew used to leave his job early when he wasn't supposed to. So the rabbi wouldn't let him be a witness at the wedding because he held he's a thief. He says, if you leave your job early, you're a thief. Right? It's just like you might as well go into a, I guess not bad, maybe it is, going into a 7-Eleven and robbing the place. 
And if someone's a thief, he's not allowed to be a witness. He's not considered a, a kosher Jew because he's a thief. So these things are very, very serious. The Torah is very strict on the way we treat other uh, other people's money, right? Because the Torah just doesn't require us to, you know, serve Hashem and and perform mitzvahs ben adam l'makom. Uh, the Torah also commands us to treat others with the same way we would want to be treated, and included in that is to be very respectful and very careful about the way we treat uh, we treat other people's money. And we're still in the middle of this. But uh, this is the first thing that the uh, Ramchal is talking about in the details of Nikius, because, as he said, Gezel stealing um, is something which people naturally have a desire to do, right? If we can, uh, right, again, like he mentioned, we might not go into a 7-Eleven or a bank and rob the place, but what we might do is, you know, we might, if we have a business, try to overcharge someone to get a little more money. Or we might try to leave work early to, uh, you know, because we feel like it. Or we might do any one of these smaller things. So to be good Jews, we have to work on not committing these uh, lesser known sins of, of thievery. In addition, just like we wouldn't go into a bank and rob it, we also should try not to do all of these, uh, you know, these sins. If anyone wants, there's a book called The Halachas of Other People's Money, which uh, goes into a lot of the details about these laws. Uh, here again, he's just talking about, uh, you know, in general, general things. But again, if you find a lost object, are you allowed to keep it? You have to give it back, you know, under certain uh, certain scenarios. If it has a simon, different things, it has an identifying feature. There's a lot of halachos, just like we, you know, had a lot of halachos about, you know, staying up the whole night of Shavuos and making blessings the next day and uh, all the halachos of Kiddush and of, uh, of different Yom Tovim and the laws of Davani that we learned. There are also a lot, a lot of halachos about what we do with other people's money, how much we can overcharge, if we can't overcharge, if we're allowed to open a business when someone already has one. Because the Torah wants us to be very particular uh, the way we, uh, we treat others, and everyone should have a beautiful, beautiful week.